Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy and in today's video I want to be talking about my top 10 waiver wire ads for week number four of the 2021 fantasy football season inside of today's video I want to be going in depth into every single player ranked inside of my top 10 waiver wire ads for the week As well as discussing why I have them ranked at each and every single spot inside of the top 10 But before we get on into discussing the waiver wire for week number four I would like to ask if you are new to the channel to please make sure to hit that subscribe button down down below if you end up enjoying and whether you are new to the channel or not to please make sure that you hit that like button down below it would help us out a ton so without further ado let's get into things the first waiver wire ad for the week is Chuba Hubbard running back of the Carolina Panthers going up against the Dallas Cowboys in Jerry's world next week now with Christian McCaffrey getting hurt and potentially being sidelined for a lot of the season that really opens the door wide open for a running back behind him to have very big success now the question is what is this situation in Carolina compared to last year because Christian McCaffrey gets hurt last Last year and they insert Mike Davis in there and Mike Davis is basically in the Christian McCaffrey role seeing so much workload but the question is how much work will Chuba Hubbard see compared to Rolls Royce Freeman who is my number two waiver wire ad of the week because this may not be identical to what happened with Mike Davis last season because maybe Hubbard is not able to be the lead back there the clear lead back and they need to use Royce Freeman heavily in kind of a running back by committee scenario where maybe both of them are valuable for fantasy football or maybe both of them kind of leech off of each other and make each other useless for fantasy football because the split share is just that close and both of them aren't playing too well now my best lean right now is that Hubbard would end up being the first running back getting the licks on the team for the Carolina Panthers but I'm still very unsure about the fact that this is going to be a clear scenario like last season where Christian McCaffrey goes down Mike Davis is inserted directly into the lineup and while Mike Davis isn't going to put up Christian McCaffrey numbers and while I don't expect Hubbard to put up Christian McCaffrey McCaffrey numbers is this going to be a situation like last year where Davis was the clear running back one and there wasn't much concern behind him because here Royce Freeman while he is not some elite running back in the NFL while he hasn't shown off too much in his NFL career from his time at the Denver Broncos he is still a relatively solid running back who could potentially etch himself ahead of a guy like Chuba Hubbard who is a rookie right now so Hubbard last week up against the Houston Texans had 11 rushes for 52 rushing yards three receptions on five targets for 20 seven receiving yards following the injury to Christian McCaffrey because when Christian McCaffrey is in the game these guys are basically irrelevant they just do not get very much use at all Royce Freeman on the other hand in week three up against the Texans had five rushes for 17 rushing yards one reception on one target for eight receiving yards so based upon those numbers you can clearly tell that Chuba Hubbard is going to be the lead back there in Carolina but I just want to let you guys know that I think you should be picking up both of these players because if you're not able to get Chuba Hubbard then you could still land yourself a huge gold mine in Royce Freeman who could potentially etch himself into the starting role of the team or maybe they're both just getting a lot of usage and that proves to be great as well for fantasy football now onto the third player of the week we have Tim Patrick of the Denver Broncos wide receiver going up against the Baltimore Ravens this week now KJ Hamler is out for the season which obviously sucks for the Denver Broncos with Jerry Judy sidelined for a decent amount of time which is what it appears at this point maybe he'll be back in a couple of weeks but I personally do not believe so but again I'm not a fucking doctor so take that as you will Tim Patrick is in a very good role now as the number two wide receiver behind Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick has been relatively decent for the last two weeks of the season following the injury to Jerry Judy up against the Jumbo Jets last week. Tim Patrick had five receptions on five targets for 98 receiving yards, leading all of the Denver Broncos in receiving yards. So it's very clear that Tim Patrick is a very solid wide receiver. He may not be available on your waiver wire as he's been a guy that I've talked about in week two as well as week three and now in the week four waiver wire ads. But in kind of shallower leagues, maybe in smaller leagues, Tim Patrick 
Patrick is still available, but I've seen him available in tons of 12-team leagues. So I think Tim Patrick is a guy that I would look to aggressively acquire right now, as it appears that Teddy Bridgewater is much better than I thought he was going to be, and probably much better than you probably believed he was going to be as well. Unless, of course, you are a Teddy Bridgewater truther, and in that case, you were right. So congratulations to you. But before we get on in to talking about my number four waiver wire ad from the week, I would like to give you guys a quick word from Yahoo. We have partnered with Yahoo Fantasy this NFL season to bring you guys an offer that is almost too good to be true. Thanks to our partnership with Yahoo, we have an exclusive deal that gets you guys two free months of Osmo Plus Platinum. You heard that right. Two free months of Osmo Plus Platinum. To qualify, you need to be new to Yahoo. Sign up for an account via the link in the description of this video. Deposit and play. That's it. Yahoo will send us your name after you play in your first paid contest, and we will reach out to you via the email with your coupon. If you would like immediate access because you want to play today, please email support at osmo.com and we'll get you set up. Just to emphasize, this offer is for Yahoo users only who are brand new to the website. If you're already a Yahoo user, then you will not be eligible for this promo. Once you're signed up, you'll get $10 for free in site credit that you can use to enter contests, including tonight's 15,000 to first Monday Night Football Baller with your two free months of Osmo Plus Platinum. You will have access to our tools and projections specifically designed for Yahoo DFS to help you win big with Yahoo Fantasy. Take advantage and join today again with Yahoo Fantasy. The link down below is in the description. So back into it, my next waiver wire ad of the week is Zach Moss running back of the Buffalo Bills going up against the Houston Texans this week, which is an excellent draw for the running back position. Week three up against the Washington football team, Zach Moss had 13 rushes for 60 rushing yards, as well as three receptions on three targets for 31 receiving yards and a touchdown. While I am not 100% going to stand here and decisively say that Zach Moss is the clear number one running back in Buffalo because to me that is just not true at this point. Devin Singletary still has his spot in this offense but if Zach Moss continues to get a decent amount of receptions game in and game out and if the Buffalo Bills could continue to look how they played in week number three up against Washington compared to how they played in week number one against Pittsburgh and week number two up against Miami then Zach Moss is going to have tons of value week in, week out, and especially this week going up against a not-so-hot Texans defense. At number five, we have Hunter Renfro, wide receiver of the Las Vegas Raiders, going up against the LA Chargers this week in LA. Week three up against the Miami Dolphins, Hunter Renfro had five receptions on six targets for 77 receiving yards and a touchdown. And if I'm being honest with you guys, it appears that Hunter Renfro may be the wide receiver number one in Viva Las Vegas, receiving over six targets in every single game. Now, I'm not saying that Henry Ruggs is washed or that Brian Edwards is not that guy, but what I'm saying is that Hunter Renfro is a very safe option week in and week out because he gets that safe amount of floor every single game. And and the Raiders offense is on fucking fire right now. The Raiders are on fire as a team as they continue to win every single game. And this week they draw the LA Chargers who did look tout up against the Kansas City Chiefs. But I expect the Raiders to play close to the Chargers in this game. And Hunter Renfro should be relatively involved in this game as well as for the future of the team and for the rest of the season. At number six, we have Emmanuel Sanders, wide receiver of the Buffalo Bills going up against the Houston Texans. Just like what I talked about with with Zach Moss, Emmanuel Sanders' value is going to skyrocket even higher if the Buffalo Bills offense continues to play at a very high rate and continues to look very, very good like they looked last week up against the Washington football team. Emmanuel Sanders had five receptions on six targets for 94 receiving yards and two total touchdowns in that game, receiving over six targets in every single game. Now, Emmanuel Sanders, some might say, hey, this is some old motherfucker. What's the use of Emmanuel Sanders? But he is definitely not the clear wide receiver too because they still use Gabe Davis. They still use Cole Beasley. But if he is involved in the game plan any given week, Emmanuel Sanders can be a weak winner. And this week drawing the Houston Texans is going to bode very, very well for Emmanuel Sanders upside on the week. At number seven, we have Marquez Callaway, wide receiver of the New Orleans Saints going up against the Giants this week. Now, despite me being basically done with Callaway's bullshit, right? Everyone buys into Marquez Callaway. 
away because this guy is the preseason darling of famous Jameis Winston. And I don't even think we were all being crazy because it was clear that he was the number one target on the Saints and with Michael Thomas sidelined, that was going to open the door immensely for Callaway to have a big season, at least until Michael Thomas returned. And then the season starts and Marquez Callaway is basically sleeping on your roster, doing absolutely nothing. And then in week number three, magically, he woke up up against the New England Patriots. Four receptions on five targets for 41 receiving yards and a touchdown. Now, I understand that it is tough to hinge your hope on your week on your wide receiver that plays with Jameis Winston because Jameis Winston is just a risky guy to be the quarterback. He'll have games where he blows the defense out. He'll have games where he throws the ball more to the defense other uh, instead of throwing the ball to his team. But at the end of the day, if Callaway continues to be the wide receiver one, and with this matchup up against the Giants, I'm definitely looking to start Callaway this week. At number eight, we have Captain Kirk, Christian Kirk, wide receiver of the Arizona Cardinals, going up against the LA Rams this week. The Arizona Cardinals and the LA Rams are on a crash course to play in what should be an excellent game this week in LA as two of the best teams in the National Football League. Christian Kirk has looked relatively solid all season, had a big week one, not a high Hot week two, right? But he was okay. And then week number three, Rondell Moore struggled, and Christian Kirk filled that role perfectly. Week three up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. But Nick, that was the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. The Jaguars aren't that good. I agree. I understand. Seven receptions on eight targets for 104 receiving yards in that game. And I do understand the sentiment that, hey, Nick, the defense in Jacksonville isn't very good, and that's okay. The LA Rams defense, obviously, they're great. But you want to know who they're going to be keying in on this game? It's going to be DeAndre Hopkins, as long as DeAndre Hopkins is good to play because he has been a little bit banged up. They're going to be keying in on him, not Christian fucking Kirk. So I think Christian Kirk is in a decent spot this week. Actually, a very good spot this week in what should be an uber high-scoring game between the Arizona Cardinals and the LA Rams. But before we get on into the final two players to add off of the waiver wire, I'd like to let you guys know that if you are looking for season-long fantasy football coverage that we have you covered, our NFL Express Weekly Pass is available today for only $3.95. $3.95, and it is more expansive than ever, as it includes access to our trade value tool, strength of schedule tool, and fantasy streaming helper. With that, you will also get our NFL DFS player and ownership rankings, access to our expert Slack chat, and everything we have to offer for NFL DFS showdown and single game contests. New this year to the package as well is projected ownership and optimal lineup probabilities for tiers contests on DraftKings. Head on over to the Osmo Plus join page today and pick up your pass for only $3.95. Stop guessing. Start winning. Join Osmo Plus today. Final two players up on the docket here for the waiver wire this week is Peyton Barber, running back of the Las Vegas Raiders, going up against the LA Chargers with Jacobs potentially missing time. Now, if Jacobs is back, then Peyton Barber is basically irrelevant, right? Not necessarily irrelevant for the team because he will get usage, but in terms of fantasy football, near irrelevant. But if he's not back, then Barber is a decent option in deep leagues. Now, I know that might sound a little bit crazy because last week up against the Dolphins, he had 23 rushes for 111 yards and one touchdown. I just don't know how reliable he will be because Kenyon Drake is still there and is going to be seeing some decent usage. As well as adding in three receptions on the day on five targets for 31 receiving yards, you can do far worse than Las Vegas Raiders running back Peyton Barber going up against the Chargers this week. Again, this very heavily hinges on the fact that he ends up getting the nod. He ends up getting to play because Josh Jacobs is hurt. Because again, if Jacobs is in the game, he is still the clear lead back in Las Vegas. Final player here is Michael Carter running back of the New York Giants going up against the Tennessee Titans. Michael Carter, this he is in a situation that is terrible because the Jets fucking stink. The Jets are terrible. But if Michael Carter is continues to be the starter on the team, which he was last week up against the Broncos. He didn't play well. I'll admit, nine rushes for 24 yards and two receptions on three targets for five yards. That's not great. It's not all sunshine and fucking roses in New York with the Jets, but maybe it could be. Maybe they turn this around, and if Michael Carter is the starting running back, that has value on any team, even if 
the Jets are so bad at this point. So go ahead and pick up Michael Carter, stash him on the bench, but he's definitely not a guy that I'm looking to just jolt into my lineup every single week until we feel a little bit more comfortable with the Jets offense. So thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you did end up enjoying, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at NotoriousFNTSY. I love all of you guys. Stay safe as always. Kaboom!